Now, I want to tell you a little bit about a success story. Now, I understand that this is one person and everyone isn't going to have the same results. Now, this lady, Cora, she gave us permission, written permission to talk about herself and what happened. And this is my wife, Catherine, and I'm in the background and Cora's daughter, Ginger, is there behind her. Ginger really helped with her mom. When we first saw her, she was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease and at 2 p.m. asked what she had for lunch. She couldn't answer at all. Breakfast, no answer. Anything, no answer. She really was just not there. Well, we worked with her every month for two years. And she also came in a wheelchair because her knees were very swollen. She had bad headaches and her health was not so good. Now, I would say that her diet had more room for improvement than normal because she was eating principally, how do I say this delicately, junk food. Uh, she's eating fast food, okay? And the fast food was not nourishing her and it was giving her excess saturated fats. She was also lacking many of the nutrients that we need. So we, with her help from Ginger, her daughter, had her change her diet. And over the months, it was amazing. She started brightening up. The lights started coming on inside. She got out of her wheelchair and moved to a walker. Over time, her headaches eased and her knees became uninflamed by this change in diet to the point where she would use a cane. And then at the, near the end of the two years, she was forgetting her cane and just walking. Isn't that wonderful? But what's really wonderful is that her brain brightened up. At the end of two years, she wrote a paper, came upstage in front of 50 doctors at our St. Francis Liliha Clinic and gave a talk about how she had Alzheimer's disease and no longer has it. Shocked the doctors for sure, because this is thought to be impossible. And it is just a case study. So you can't depend on it. Uh, now, our trial was a clinical randomized trial, and that is more dependable than a, a certain case. But I do wanna say that it is possible to get better. And um, we grew to really love Cora highly and really are amazed at the great progress that she did. Now, part of her problem, of course, was vascular dementia, not just Alzheimer's disease. And she also took the brain and body food with which she couldn't get into the trial. She was one year too young to get into our trial. So we gave her the supplement that we made for people who couldn't get into the trial. And I think that those nutrients helped and easing vascular dementia helped quite a bit. What would you call this? It's called saturated fats. On the top of the screen, we have two pictures. Okay, on the right, we have saturated fats. And on the left, we have saturated fats. Uh, the effects of saturated fats are when they're excessive in the diet to clog arteries as shown here. Saturated fats shown on the left. What do they do when you have high dietary saturated fat? Well, they increase arterial blockage. They reduce the blood supply to brain cells and kill off brain cells. Also, by clogging arteries, pieces of that yellow plaque you see can break off. If they're tiny pieces, they can create vascular dementia by having multiple tiny strokes. One stroke might kill off a memory center. One stroke might kill off thinking area. Little by little, eating up the brain, or of course, a bigger piece of plaque can break off and clog the brain, causing a severe or deadly stroke or heart attack. So it's really better not to have these clogged arteries. Now, I think it's interesting that increased cholesterol as a result of these saturated fats being high in the diet increases the formation of amyloid plaques in the brain. And I'll tell you a little bit about lipid rafts as we go along here today. So to reduce blood flow to the brain, reduce saturated fats, which are usually animal fats in the diet. The only exception to this would be uh, coconut oil. Now, coconut oil doesn't actually exist because in lipid terminology, when a lipid is solid at room temperature, it's called a fat. So coconut fat would be the correct definition of it. However, for advertising purposes, coconut oil is how it's sold. Coconut oil has a very high content of saturated fats. 65% of them are the three highest artery clogging fats. And so if you are 
trying to avoid animal fat, watch out for the trap of packaged products have coconut oil in them. Very common in ice cream, um, non-dairy cheeses, and many other products, non-dairy meats, uh, uh, excuse me, non-animal meats also frequently have high levels of coconut oil. I'd suggest checking the packages. And for me, if it's over four grams of saturated fat in a serving, I won't buy it. I'll choose another one. And there are choices that have low amounts. Now, saturated fats have been found to increase memory decline. In this study, they killed off about half of the brain cells through oxidation, which is how brain cells are killed, and also through mitochondrial degeneration. Now, the mitochondria are energy factories in the brain, and their membranes are also damaged by oxidation. So this can be avoided simply by reducing the amount of animal fats and saturated fat in the diet. This is from a 2021 study in the journal Life Sciences. Uh, this was amazing. Uh, the, they fed 100 students, half of them, a 30% sat fat breakfast. Okay, high sat fat breakfast. The others had a 6% sat fat breakfast, which is nice, low, reasonable amount. You want to keep your sat fats at 6% or less of the calories in a day, so it's perfect. Now, the 30% sat fat breakfast, they reduced hippocampal memory 16%. How long did that take? Was it months, years, decades? No, four days. That's how long it took, just four days. Is that amazing? These high saturated fat debt breakfast can do in four days. Now, another interesting part of this was that the sugar intake of these high sat fat breakfasts only went up 7%, just a little bit. But the blood sugar of the people to eating the high saturated fat breakfast jumped from 77, which is perfect, to 118 milligrams per deciliter, which is pre-diabetic in four days. So two effects of saturated fats, memory decline and insulin resistance creating diabetes. Well, I just wanted to back this up with another study, another 2021 study. In this study, in three days, high saturated fat diets impaired. Now the hippocampus is one of our main memory areas and thinking area too. It impaired learning and memory in the hippocampus in three days. Now, one way it did this is by the saturated fats reduced synaptic plus. That means will basically make it hard to learn. They also damage the ability of our cells, our nerve cells in our brain to use the common neurotransmitters, acetylcholine, dopamine, and serotonin. Now, acetylcholine is the one that Donepazole is there to try and make more acetylcholine. Um, and here we have saturated fats making less acetylcholine. Now, the final effect of these increased saturated fats in the diet was a decrease in brain-derived neurotrophic factor. This is very, very important because this allows us to make new brain cells from neural stem cells so that we can continue to keep our brain alive. So we're losing connections between brain cells with reduced synaptic plasticity. We're reducing our ability to replace damaged brain cells and we're reducing neurotransmitters all with increased saturated fat in the diet. I hope I'm inspiring you to lower because some of favorite foods have high saturated fats. I'll show you the foods, in fact, in a minute. In another study, uh, this is a 2020 study. Uh, this was actually done in Australia. Higher intake of saturated fats in all stages of adulthood were associated with Alzheimer's disease, excuse me, Alzheimer's disease and impaired cognitive performance. Reduced memory, memory speed, and overall cognitive function were noted. It was easy to find people with high saturated fats in Australia because the beef industry is very strong. Um, so here's a, yet another study, and this is from Molecular Neurobiology in 2021. And th this is actually a cell study instead of a people study. I usually just look at people studies, but in this case, I looked at a cell study. They use high saturated fats and it killed off the brain cells. And they got about 
50% of the brain cells killed off with a high saturated fat diet. Now, let's talk a little bit about brain inflammation. I uh, recently, this year, published a paper called Reducing Neuroinflammation in Parkinson's Disease with Dietary Components. This neuroinflammation also happens with Alzheimer's disease and related dementias. And it is this neuroinflammation, inflammation of the nerves in the brain, that is creating more oxidation, more death of brain cells. So the brain is shrinking and connections are being damaged. What happens with the excess saturated fats in the brain is that we have a police force, an immune system in the brain called microglia. And normally they're not activated. They just patrol like a, a calm patrol one police officer and they don't create any trouble. In fact, they help brain cells. However, when they're activated by saturated fatty acids, the microglia have sensors, receptors called toll-like receptor four. And this is a pattern recognition receptor that sees the excess saturated fatty acids and it creates more nuclear factor kappa B, a transcription factor that causes the microglia to create many of these cytokines. These inflammatory cytokines include interleukin-1 beta, interleukin-6, interferon gamma, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. These are part of the cytokine storm that we saw with COVID-19. And there's certainly a cytokine storm in the brain created by excess saturated fats. Now we have seen that the, uh, the saturated fats can cross the blood-brain barrier and that they do activate microglia in, via the toll-like receptors. And this cascade of cytokines, principally through oxidation, kills off our brain cells. What can you do? Eat less saturated fats. <laughs>